slide one, please. So I'm going to start my uh, my quick talk with the end and start and and finish with the beginning, if that makes any sense. The world will after this ex after this whole ordeal, the world will never be the same, um, which is quite daunting at the outset. But then, as one takes a breather or a sigh, it's uh, it's an aha moment. So. Um, I remember keeping an old fortune cookie from a Chinese takeaway restaurant as a student and it says the following, stop searching forever, happiness is just next to you. So with all of the restricted travel, more than ever, I think it's time to reach into our backyards, have a look around and give some thought to what the world really has to offer. And on that note, here are some small steps. We've come up with uh, some observed post-COVID design trends. Um, and I think um, with this comes really uh, an, a newness or, or an excitement or a potential to work in this new world that we're not actually quite sure what it's about. The first one is fusing 3D tech with regional arts and crafts. So here we have a uh, 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 just a, a, a computer image from one of our screens on a um, on a wellness project. Um, it's uh, it's it's a 3D model that we uh, that we do a lot of studies in, and um, it's now I think important to work directly with uh, factories using all of the emerging technology or the top technology we have around, and sending that directly to fabricators. Now, I don't mean necessarily by uh, fabricators that can just make things, but actually um, a whole movement in arts and crafts, which is already available, um, especially in Southeast Asia with um, smaller objects and found objects like the uh, baskets and uh, bits and pieces you have here. But what you see here is um, on the top right hand side is um, actually a project for um, a wellness studio uh, currently under construction for uh, for a uh, for a client. Point two, um, this one's already been raised uh, with Bill Barnett's talk last week, and that's out with sorry in with the old and out with the new. On the very left hand side, uh, that's uh, that's what I would consider a found object. It's a hybrid of something antique and something mid century, but it works. It looks a little bit schizophrenic, but it's a solution to a common problem of seating. Um, it was detected on a busy street and it was uh, found literally in, this, in, in the back door. These objects were found um, on an illegal beach stroll. I shouldn't say that too loudly, but if one was to potentially adopt designs like this, think of all that plastic you could save for the next conference chair. Thousands and thousands of chairs acres and acres of plastic. I've tried the one on the right. It's very, very comfortable. And um, it's just food for thought. So uh, on the slide three, this is a, uh, <coughs> this is a project called uh, Project Rattan, including some designers um, that, have, uh, that have come out of this. Um, and they're, they're working with, uh, with new trends in uh, working in, in Rattan and arts and crafts. I think also with this, uh, Point two, I think um, it's important to, to, to look at locally found objects and use those for inspiration. This is a, an object commonly found in Thailand. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a chicken coop or a chicken cage. Um, and on the right, you have a, a piece uh, from one of our wellness projects, which is a huge LED lantern that uh, is, a, is a feature piece in a, uh, in, a, in a staircase. On to point three, noble materials returning to nature. I think texture, tactility, surface, connections are all things that are incredibly important in design. They always have been, but I think pre-COVID, they tend to have been forgotten. And the slide on the left is a really, really interesting structural experiment involving probably one of the world's oldest materials, and that's just a common brick, into a very sophisticated three-dimensional arch it's actually for a project that we're uh, we're working um, in the south of uh, in the south of Thailand for uh, for for residents. 
Um, and on the right hand side, that's a very, very simple image or a photograph of the brick pits in southern Thailand. Um, and I think if designers were to start to work in with really first hand research, um, they'd uncover and start to and, and, and start to discover, rediscover things like these opportunities and, uh, and potential uh, materials again. This is uh, on the left, you have a, um, a, a detail, God is in the details uh, of, a, uh, of a plywood bench. Um, and on the right, a rattan screen with a little bit of a touch or a hint of some arts and crafts weaving. Um, and these are things, uh, patina, texture, touch, local materials, natural materials that I think start to get lost in the process of design. And this is really a wonderful opportunity um, to bring those back uh, in the process of going local. People to people. I think it's uh, the return of identity, artisans and craftsmanship. I think we need to tell stories again. We need to communicate with individuals. We need to go back to local creative sources, especially after a lockdown. Uh, faceless importation is, it's got to be reduced. Mass production and inferior synthetic pro products are clogging the marketplace now. Um, and here you see a few uh, photographs of uh, local uh, craftspeople um, in Thailand. Their uh, craft level are very, very high. And sadly, a lot of these people are being displaced or being put out of business um, for the sheer fact that of people are importing goods online. Um, they're importing goods from places which are uh, price competitive. But that might all change with travel. If travel becomes more expensive, if it becomes a little bit more difficult, we don't know yet. These are things to also look out for. These are, these are items that, uh, that should be um, you know, carefully reviewed. I think uh, post-COVID design is a wonderful opportunity to go to deal with people to people, making places, not just spaces. Um, and here's another example of, uh, of, a, of a craftsperson that can actually produce, uh, pr produce a very, very high level of craft. And when that's dovetailed with technology, can introduce a level of patina, um, of touch, of sensory experience to something that you can't just get from a machine or an inferior um, a plastic product. This is a, a further continuation of that point. On the left-hand side, um, this is, uh, these are some seating details that, we, uh, that we've, we've, worked, we've worked up uh, for, for, a, uh, for a wellness project, for another wellness project. And you can see that they're overtly modern in style and design. We've, we've worked with computation, we've worked with uh, CNC milling, laser cutting, but there's that, that, that finishing of the product is, is the handcraft, the patina, um, that richness of natural materials. These are all made out of rattan, which is the, a highly sustainable material. And I think these are all cues to what um, the future could hold in design trends. On the right-hand side is a, uh, is, is a discovery um, that I made. It's a, it's a handcrafted object, uh, a, a boat, um, just, just in the process of being all put together in a very, very detailed, very, very niche, beautifully crafted. It's a, it's a beautifully crafted object um, aside from uh, being being a functional being a functional object point five um, I think the uh, I, I think the goal set for um, designers for the future is to design an antique of tomorrow um, that should be the new brief the aspiration for designers today um, I think that um, it's important for designers to really start to dig deep and to look into sources of inspiration um, that are tactile, that are part of the environment that they're, they're a part of or that they grow up in. Um, the internet is not a solution for everything. Um, it might be a wonderful resource, but it's not just an idea in and of itself. I think designers need to, in some way, dig deeper into the fundamentals of what an object should be how a building should be responsive to its environment. Um, this particular slide here is a, uh, it's an urban master plan concept that we're working up. 
Um, and um, it relies on its environment to be climate responsive. So the project is not resisting the place where it's built, it's actually embracing the place that it's built. Um, and I think designers should start to look for more appropriate products, be ambitious, because the disposable culture on many levels has actually set us back. Um, on that note, I'll close on the, uh, on the slide for the beginning, for the end. I think this um, is actually a new beginning for us. I think it questions who are we really building for? Where do we start again? We have to return to where we were, but maybe we should return instead of go back. Maybe it's a detour, those sorts of things. Um, I think we should contemplate for the future of design.